we've taken some of the most extreme road trips possible all across the continent, up to Alaska and around every single continental state. And we've done it in some incredible cars. Cars that I would have never dreamed of being able to own and go on adventures with. But road trips don't have to be in the most expensive cars just to be fun. I really do want to spend as little money as possible. 15.8 miles per gallon. <laughs> How? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes cheaper cars are more enjoyable, so we found two cars on Auto Tempest that might be better than their more premium variants. Nothing is going to go wrong. The Mazda RX-8 is one of the most affordable ways to experience Mazda's fabled rotary engine. And the Eclipse GSX is the most cost-effective way to get Mitsubishi's all-wheel drive with a turbo. My car literally vibrates <laughs> when you're next to me like that. It's just so fun to annoy him. <laughs> Well, here we are again, taking another road trip, and this time I'm taking a car that I hate to love. Rotary Mazda RX-8. I've always thought that if you wanted to experience a Rotary, you should get an RX-8, because RX-7s are like 40 grand, and I think that car is mostly priced like that because of how it looks, not because of how it drives. If you want a Rotary, RX-8 is the way to go, because it's a lot cheaper. But Ben also bought a car that he hates to love. Similar to Ben, if you want to experience the all-wheel drive 4G63 Mitsubishi Magic, uh, unfortunately, you're gonna be set back about 30 or 40 grand, but you can do it for a lot cheaper if you purchase a Mitsubishi Eclipse. It, it is a Mitsubishi, it is 4G63, it is all-wheel drive. In those regards, it is kind of similar to an Evo. Unfortunately, also like an Evo, it's taken all of my money. I bought this rust bucket for $6,500, and I've spent a few thousand more to get it actually functional. This RX-8 also cost me more than I thought it would, as I bought it with a blown motor and had to buy another RX-8 just to fix this one. We're both well over our budget on these cars. We originally planned the road trip to be a budget-friendly version of the RX-7 and Evo but we've now both spent over $10,000, which doesn't leave much money left for fuel, food, and lodging on this trip. So what do you say we pinch pennies on this here road trip? Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you on that one. How about whoever spends the most amount of money on this trip has to pay for the other person's drive back home? That sounds, no, that's a, no. Well, that's fair, whoever's more financially you, responsible would... gets the advantage of being more financially responsible. We know responsible. that I'm financially irresponsible, Ben. Yeah, but I'm gonna blow a motor. You would ruin me if I had to pay for the trip. I gotta add premix when I fuel up. It costs so much. Let's just go. I just don't, I don't even wanna think about it. I'm probably it. gonna burn coolant. I gotta Let's buy go. more coolant. I don't think Ben realizes just how far I'm willing to go to pinch a penny. He will be paying for the trip back. I'll make sure of that. You good? What? You ready to go? Dude. All right, I'll see you at the gas station. Oh my gosh. Look alive, cause while I was waiting for you, paradise is on the other side of the road. We don't know, taking a long way from you and I was born to grow. It's not easy to find a rare car like an R3 RX-8, and it's definitely not easy to find a running DSM. So when we were looking for the cars that we were going to be bringing on this road trip, we really needed to cast a wide net. Facebook, Craigslist, eBay, we were looking all up and down the East Coast for candidates that might be interesting and cheap. Auto Tempest made our job significantly easier by compiling all of the search results into one place. And Auto Tempest will let you search nationwide if you're really that desperate. Although I wouldn't recommend driving across the country for an RX-8. The really nice thing about Auto Tempest is that it's not just another place that you have to look when you're trying to find a car to buy. It's kind of the only place you have to look because it just shows you everything that's for sale all at once in one place. And I use that incredible power to buy a terrible DSM. We're headed west across the country to Moab, but it's not necessarily about Moab itself. It's about the harsh journey to get there, testing both cars through multiple mountain ranges and a wide variety of climates. Oh, and we're also taking this trip in the peak winter month of January. So we're 
are obviously pinching pennies on this road trip and there is a bit of a competition aspect. So I'm trying to spend as little money on the record as possible, but I mean, what Ben doesn't know won't hurt him. Surely some peanut M&Ms and goldfish won't skew the result too much. Just a couple of snacks. Ben doesn't need to know about this at all. Except Ben forgot to account for the fact that I'm the one editing this video series. So I saw that, and I saw that it cost $4.45. So it looks like I'm off to a head start. For the first time kind of on one of these road trips, money is really a factor for us. Uh, no joke, I'm poor at the moment. And I would say that Ben is probably in a similar boat. So I really do want to spend as little money as possible. Besides the fact that there is a competition aspect to this, and uh, I really want to beat Ben and spend less money on this trip. The one saving grace is that Ben decided to get an RX-8. <sighs> if anything is going to make a DSM look reliable, it is the Renesis motor in that RX-8. And if anything is going to make this car look fuel economical, it's going to be that rotary right there, buddy. Well, this is not necessarily the most ideal car for a road trip, but I will say it is pretty smooth. So this car is mostly stock. It has an intake, and that is mostly for reliability reasons. It opens up the back side of the radiator so that air can flow through and cool off the engine more. It's also got an exhaust so you can hear the rotary a little bit better, and it has Fortunato coilovers, very comfortable coilovers, and it has wheels and tires. Obviously, I'm running snow tires because we're taking a road trip in the winter. Other than that, it is stock. I mean, it's not even been tuned. It is. There's no check engine light, we're good. But the GSX is making over 300 horsepower and has a rather uh, creative all-wheel drive swap done to it. So I'm obviously worried about a lack of reliability costing me money on this trip. But I think I can make up for it by the fact that I'm super frugal. Ramen noodles are still the primary staple of my diet. So my strategy is to spend as little money on food as possible. Of course, my Eclipse has a low compression built motor, which means it wasn't exactly designed with fuel efficiency in mind, so there's not much that I can do about the cost of gas. Yeah, sorry, it's like a rotary thing, or at least a non-turbo rotary thing. The fuel burn on its way down. So Somehow flood. you found a way to be as irritating as possible. I, that's what they tell me. I'm trying to give this engine the best chance that it's got, all right? Man, I really thought I would be able to beat you on fuel economy, but I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Ben, I've done the math on the premix. Every time I have to fill up, it is $1.70 in premix. Uh, I don't know if you watched the last build video on the GSX. The all-wheel drive swap involved swapping around some gas lines from the filler neck. The previous owner swapped and did not do super well, so you have to fill it very, very slowly. Yeah, like you want to see what happens? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, so... Man, that's money right there, dude. You just lost I, like 20 I cents. Know. Don't, you don't have to tell me. So <laughs> no, that's pretty, that's really, actually, this is, Ben, this is the worst I've ever gotten on any vehicle I own. Hold on, let me see. The car is stock. It's a stock car. Okay, well, mine's not good. N nor is mine. I was, I was actually dead on with my calculation. It's 19 and a half oh. miles per gallon. Okay. Which is, I mean, I, I was driving like a, a, a silly goose. Yeah. Oh, times. yeah. Yeah. So I could probably get that up to 2021 20, mm -hmm. if I drive a little more conservatively, but mm -hmm. that's still pretty bad. I mean, if you got worse than that, I would, I would feel yeah, pretty bad. No, for you. yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't get, uh, I didn't get any, I didn't get any worse than that. No, <laughs> no, I, I was a lot. Well, how many I, gallons did you? Well, um, oh, 12 gallons. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I only used nine and a half, Ben. Oh. I filled up for $34. Uh, maybe there might be a hole or leak or something somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty tough. Yeah, that's 15, oh, 15 point eight. <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got a leg up on you in the gas mileage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's 10 bucks every time we fill up. <laughs> oh, that genuinely does suck. <laughs> that's gonna be a pretty big split. Wow. We split a hotel cost for the night and both thought it would be wise to steal as much food as possible from the hotel breakfast bar. It is for the guests, right? 
Except there was no way that we would be able to return to this hotel, because we decided to leave early in the morning, and Ben's Eclipse isn't exactly neighborhood friendly. Cold starts, am I right? <laughs> to everybody at the Wingate by Wyndham in Erkin, West Virginia. Oh, I look, I can hear it bouncing off of the wall. Like, I think people are coming to their windows now. It's not even that, it's 8.30. Ben's car might be loud and obnoxious, but my car might have a bigger problem. It seems that my rotary has taken a liking to burning coolant. But there's nothing that I can do about that, so we're just going to ignore it. So Ben thinks that he's going to be able to win this budget challenge based solely on the unreliability of my modified DSM. And he is correct to a certain degree. This car is definitely going to break and cost me money. But what he's not accounting for is that I'm going to be able to close the gap by a difference in lifestyle. I already live a very Spartan, no-frills lifestyle. Him, on the other hand, he is a prissy, pampered little prince who needs his Starbucks. Hey Ben, there's a Starbucks up here. Um, well, I think exit 18. You want to Oh, they had coffee at the hotel, Ben. Did you go from there? I wouldn't really call that coffee. It kind of tastes like, uh, like ground up dog food. I mean, it was free though. Yeah, I, Ben, you know I have a caffeine addiction and I need a large coffee from Starbucks, so. Hey, you know, it feels nice to hear you say it. Hello, welcome to Starbucks. What can I get for you today? Hi, I um, just placed a mobile order for Ben. But what Ben doesn't realize is that I have accrued a lot of points on the Starbucks app over the years. I think this trip might be the time to cash in on those. <laughs> Check out zero dollars. Don't mind if I do. There you go. Great, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Ben, you want to hear the loudest sound in the world? My car literally vibrates when you're next to me like that. <laughs> it's just so fun to annoy him. <laughs> So just to give you an idea of how much, how much heavy lifting this glass is doing. Thank God I have working windows. Ben, I like that we've ascended to the point where we can know that both of these cars suck, but also they're really cool at the same time. Yeah, I simultaneously despise and also really appreciate both of the cars that we have. Uh, and I think that we, we picked two good cars, to be honest. Yeah, I'm uh, ready for a nice, easy road trip. We're gonna get some nice scenery and nothing's gonna go wrong. Nothing is going to go wrong. Uh, ben, we need to take the next exit because uh, my check engine light just came on and I'm gonna need to give that a check. Bro, you're joking. Ben, we're, we're in West Virginia. <laughs> We've only made it one state over. Okay, Ben, don't think I didn't see you at the last stop trying to adjust your car, and I, I saw those wrenches out fixing stuff. Yeah, nothing's broken, it was preventative. I don't, nothing's broken either. I just got a light on the dash. That's it, buddy. <laughs> I'm not wishing ill on Ben. I think it's important to point that out. It's just funny. When we were working on this car, it had, I think, six check engine lights initially. Okay. So it could be a lot of things. I think. PO420. PO420. Yeah, that's, cat, cat that's the cat. P0420. P0420. Um, I have this little button right here. I can press that. And now I don't have a check engine light. So now, <laughs> so now I'm. Now, the, I've got now no, the problem has been fixed. There's no <laughs> problems anymore. Yeah, we're. We were good to go. All right. <laughs> My first reliability scare, and we're only one state over. I'm only $5 behind so far, but with each gas stop, I'm gonna fall further behind. 
so I really can't afford to have any breakdowns. Thankfully, I can rely on my stellar trip planning to save me some costs. I think we're okay. I think we'll, I think we'll be alright. I actually have the foresight and planning to pack food with me, which I have in the back seat here. I've got tons of snacks, tons of food, tons of drinks, water, I, I can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Unfortunately, I don't have food with me and I'm definitely not going to spend all of my money on eating out. So I'm going to make a quick stop at Walmart and see what we can scrounge up. This little number right here, Ooh. reduced chocolate muffin, 88 cents, that's breakfast right there, baby. Got a dollar seventy-eight French bread with garlic herb. Okay, so that's lunch. Got three dollar Jif Crunchy. That's gonna last me two days. Got some uh, unripe bananas, so that will delay me eating them. These are cheap. Got four gala apples. These were a dollar thirty-seven a pop. Some Red Bull, because uh, it's gonna be more expensive to buy at the gas station. So. Saving some pennies that one. $19.82, and I think this should be at least two days worth of food. Okay, so our fuel economy has gone up a little bit. We're at 18 flat. Uh, unfortunately, Ben's has also gone up. He's now over 20, so uh, that puts me another $10 behind. I am honestly blown away at just how inefficient this car is. This is the most modern rotary you can get. How is it this bad at gas mileage? The Model T got better gas mileage than this car. What? I'm pretty impressed that we've made it this far on only 150 bucks, and by now we're deep into Kentucky. As a matter of fact, we're almost to Paris. Wait, no, that's Ben, you're on this. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Obviously. Obviously, Eiffel Tower. Paris, France, right. whatever. They got that idea from Paris, Kentucky. Really? This is, this, this, this is the original? This was here before. Wow. No, actually they put this in in 2021. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Is the Eiffel Tower also white? I don't know, I've never seen it. I don't think it's white. Well then, I, I guess, you know, we're kind of already, <laughs> we're in France as it is, so, you know, you wanna bust out some lunch? I've got some water from Walmart. Yeah, same. So obviously, you know, we're trying to be Ooh. as frugal as possible. That sounds really nice. Uh -huh. Garlic. Uh, de François? Mm. Uh-huh. When it comes to being food frugal, Ben has no shot because I am willing to eat garbage. You might be more frugal than me, but I'm far more prepared oh. in uh, bringing stuff from home. So I have all of this food. <laughs> um, so let's see, we got full loaf of bread. It is great value. Yeah, but I didn't know that we were doing this um, until until you pop the- Oh, you just don't prepare while you were planning on spending all this extra money? <laughs> I also have some bananas, some uh, trail mix, and a nice Ziploc baggie to make myself a little peanut butter and jelly on that bread there. Let's look covered raisins. <laughs> Chug me a water. Chug me a water, big dog, for real. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna cost you. <laughs> Bro, this is like Bro. this is like 25 cents or so. <laughs> Oh I'm adding that one to what your tab. <laughs> After a wonderfully peaceful lunch, we decided to leave Paris and keep heading west. What a calm and tranquil road trip this has been so far. It'd be a shame if one of us had a catastrophic mechanical failure right about now. Ben, I, just, I think I just lost the engine. Uh, it could be a serpentine belt or something. Maybe, the car just completely shut off. Can you make it to the exit? Yeah, I can't make it off the exit, but I can make it kind of to it. Yeah, just roll as far as you can. Uh, I was cruising, just steady state throttle in fifth gear, and suddenly it just went boom, and then just shut off completely. Oh, it's timing belt. Yeah, timing <gasps> belt. That's right. Is it still? Oh no. Yeah, you blew the motor. Wow. I, I'm legit, I'm speechless. 
Yeah, I mean, it's my fault because I saw it was working its way over and I didn't didn't try and change it, but. I've never heard of that happening. Like if, I guess your timing pulley is like a little bit bent, it's gonna force, no, it'd have to be bent this way. It's gonna force the, pull, the belt outward, I guess, yeah. until it just frays itself apart, which is clearly what happened. <laughs> Word. <laughs> this might be a bad time to mention the fact that rotaries don't have timing belts. Yeah, I mean that car's done. So. Dude. It does suck. Yeah, I'm like really conflicted because I really did like that Eclipse. I think it's a really good car. I'm like, I was jealous of it, not gonna lie. It's cool. But I'm also like super happy now because I I'm, I think I've won the Who cost. Cares? I've won the cost challenge good, for sure. Yeah, good, great. <laughs> it, like this is like an actual like, I am personally <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, so what's the plan? What do you want to do? I can take it to my tuner, Ken. Uh, he says he has another head and we can put it on the motor. We have a game plan. We're going to trailer my Eclipse from Kentucky all the way back to North Carolina and have the cylinder head swapped by DSM builder Kenny McDonald, who tuned my car previously. But RX-8s can't tow car trailers, so the first step is to get a U-Haul. Right now the gas gauge is at zero. So we have to leave U-Haul and go directly to fill it up with, I would say this probably has like a 40 gallon gas tank and it's a 7.3 liter V8. Ben, don't forget to count this up on your tally. I want receipts for all this gas. This will be at least a hundred bucks, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think at least that. If, if this truck beats the mileage of my RX-8, I'm gonna be really sad. All right, now we just gotta go to Valvoline, drop the RX-8 off, yep. then we're going to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we're getting this head swapped. Valvoline's headquarters are here in Kentucky, and since I don't want to risk putting extra miles on the rotary, we're going to drop off the RX-8 here for a little detour back down to North Carolina, because I don't want to push my luck any more than I have to, and I might as well save the fuel costs as well. You smell the coolant too. I do smell running. coolant, yeah. So maybe let's just leave it here. Yeah. Game plan. We're bombing into Charlotte tonight. Okay, you're driving. Yeah. Head on the car tomorrow, and then we'll be back here tomorrow night to pick your car up. Tomorrow night. That's the game plan. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do it. Oh, am I riding this? Yeah, you're running. Let's go. Can I maybe ride an Eclipse? <laughs> maybe the seat reclines at least. Why do you like the Eclipse all of a sudden? Well, this, because the Eclipse is no longer Come loud. On, get in. Uh, Yeah, we're getting about six and a half miles per gallon right now, towing the Eclipse with a 20-foot box truck. Uh, we're driving six hours tonight. We should get there around 1.20 a.m. And Ken said he might start on it tonight. So oh, I love it. All I have left is to be excited. I don't, I don't know what I did to deserve. Is it because I made fun of the previous owner so much in my build series? Previous owner installed them. This man is my nemesis. No, I think you just bought a bad car, Ben. Yeah. Anybody could have told you that. Think about it this way, Ben. Nothing that you did to the car broke. That's true. Hey, that makes me feel good. Yeah. I, maybe I should have checked that timing belt before probably. we left, though. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's about a 400-mile drive down to Kenny's shop in North Carolina. I towed the Eclipse nonstop through the night on our six-hour drive back from Kentucky. I'm willing to throw away sleep if it means getting this car back on the road for a reasonable price. So we've gone um, 203 miles and we need gas. Uh, we've been getting seven miles per gallon. 
So maybe this truck is uh, rotary powered. <laughs> Boy, howdy, I'm about $1,000 behind Ben at this point as far as the budget's concerned. I have to keep reminding myself that Ben does have a rotary powered car for this trip, so his time for repairs will come. My only hope is that Kenny can get the car fixed tonight for relatively cheap. It is currently 2.01 a.m. We have made it to North Carolina. And uh, these fine gentlemen right here, we're gonna get this DSM back on the road. Kenny is an OG in the DSM community. He's been building DSMs for decades now. When I sent him a video of my timing belt failure, he was confident that the bottom end was fine and we could have the head swapped in just a night. And we'll have to get the job done tonight because this failure threatens to put the trip massively behind schedule. With the help of his fellow DSM enthusiasts, Lorenzo and Isaac, we all get started tearing the Eclipse apart as quick as we can. Oh, did it break the sensor? Son of a gun. I wasn't trying to fix that. But guess what, Ben, I was prepared. I know there's a lot of riffraff about gates and uh, Grady timing belts because they're very stiff and there's not a lot of give to them, but there's nothing wrong with them, okay? And one thing I noticed the most when doing timing on a lot of these cars is they're over tension by a lot, all right? You don't have to take it from me, but I've never had a problem with these. It turns out that the failure happened because of a loose tensioner that made the belt walk outward away from the motor until it hit the guide pulley on the oil pump, which has a sharp edge and cut the belt in half. Yeah, it's built. It's definitely built. Uh, I don't know what brand piston these are because I don't feel like taking out the oil pan to double check, but uh, these are definitely aftermarket pistons. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's okay. It ain't, it ain't do no damage to these. To my amazement, there is no significant damage to the bottom end, but the valves did make contact with the pistons, so we can't reuse the head. That's why we're at Kenny's shop, though, because he's got a new head ready to go on. Oh, that's it. That's it. Heads on, baby. It's morning time, fellas. It's 7 a.m. now, only five hours after we got started, but the car is all together now and we're ready to fire it up and be on our way. On the next episode of The Road Trip, Ben tries to act like he's not impressed with my eclipse, Ben eats unsalted potato chips, and Ben tailgates me. Thanks again to Auto Tempest for sponsoring this trip. Head over to autotempest.com or download the Auto Tempest app with the links in the description below to find your next car. Just make sure you make better choices than we did. <laughs>